Uh, this discussion about Adam and evolution is a pretty recent one in the history of the church, uh, and that's because the scientific developments are relatively recent. I mean, they go back, uh, you know, 150 years when evolutionary theory started sort of uh, catching on, and, and even before then, uh, geological studies showed, you know, the age of the earth and fossils and things like that. And, and more recently, um, the study of the human genome, which was completed just a few years ago, um, has been considered by, by Christian geneticists and, and others as uh, very clear proof that uh, there is a long evolutionary history that uh, gives rise to human beings. Um, so that, in a way that sort of forces the question on Christians in a way that might not have been an issue two, three, four hundred years ago. Uh, so in a sense, yeah, I mean, th these things are sort of pushing us to think differently. But there's much more at stake here than um, simply let's find a way to make, you know, the, to put a square peg in a round hole and uh, to sort of hold on to things that just don't want to be held on to. What I think uh, a study of, of uh, you know, taking science seriously, what that does, and also looking at the, um, the historical and cultural backgrounds to Genesis and to Paul, what that does is those are things sort of in a way come together to really push us to think what it means to read the Bible well, which means reading it in a way that um, makes, would make sense in the ancient world, so we sort of understand the theology of what the Israelites were thinking at the time. Um, and also the theology of what Paul was thinking about at his time when he wrote Romans and when he wrote 1 Corinthians. Um, it's not just a matter of putting a band-aid on Christianity. It's actually this whole controversy, and it is a controversy between evolution and Adam. Um, this whole controversy, I think, will push the church to appreciate biblical literature actually for what it is, which is given by God to ancient people to answer ancient questions rather than imposing our own understanding, our own views of these things, um, onto the biblical text. Um, I think very often the assumption is made that it's the Word of God, it's got to speak my language. No, it doesn't. Um, it has to speak the language that it's speaking. And, and you know, we have the, the privilege and the responsibility of trying to understand that. So, I don't see evolution as this major shift in, my goodness, now everyone's thinking differently about the Bible. It's just another piece of the puzzle that is, um, I think, encouraging us to, I guess, read the Bible for what it is and for all that it's worth and to um, allow the Bible to be the Bible and to allow that to speak into our lives rather than forcing our lives to speak sort of onto the Bible.